What's going on guys, it's Dave again. I'm back today doing a build for my buddy Brogan. He has a full tower build on his floor currently and he needs to put it on his desk, but can't because he doesn't have the room. So we're gonna do an ITX build for him today with a Coolmaster NR200P case. Uh, he currently has a 7700K, but we're gonna upgrade him to a 5900X to give him substantially more processing power than he has now. To save some money on the budget, uh, we're going to reuse his 2070 Super, which is more than enough for the games that he currently plays. Um, all in all, I think he spent about 1800 bucks or so on everything. So I think he's gonna be pretty happy with this when it's all built. So let's build. Since this is the second time I am building in this case, I have learned a couple things since the first time. But one thing that has not changed is installing the M.2 drive and the front panel sound adapter onto the motherboard first is the best way to go. Brogan requested a 2TB drive, and at the time, the Sabarant Rocket 4 Plus 2TB drive was the best value. The best advice I can give you is after you install the 2TB drive, leave the heatsink cover off and remove the small plastic cover that's covering the sound plug before putting the M.2 heatsink cover back on. There is nothing that says you have to do it like this, but it does make it slightly easier in my opinion. Also, be careful getting the M.2 heatsink cover back on because there are some small pins on one end and they do have to go back into a very small plug. These pins are very easy to bend and it is kind of a pain to get in and lined up perfectly, so just keep that in mind. Next, I installed the 5900X, which some people may not recommend because of how hot the chip runs, but since I posted the video for my daily driver build, I have since upgraded to a 5950X and do not have any issues, so I know the 5900X will work and be thermally alright. At this point, I decided to install the motherboard since everything else can be done without having to contort my hands or arms in any crazy or absurd fashion. The only thing I will mention is the screw near the CPU power cable can be tricky. You may have to unscrew the power plug above and move it out of the way depending on the type of screwdriver you are using. Before I put the GPU in, I mounted the 120mm Nacho fans that are 15mm thick on the bottom of the case. Once they were in, I got the power supply installed and please, please, please make sure that the fan is facing the side panel so that it gets fresh air. The next thing I did was install the RAM and I will let everyone know now, there was a ton of instability issues with the 4000 MHz RAM that Brogan bought. It is currently running stable at 3600 MHz, but no matter what I tried or what setting I changed, I could not get it stable above that. After discussing with Brogan, he decided to live with it rather than deal with the hassle of the RMA process with Newegg. I am at the point where I can get the GPU in. To save on money, Brogan is reusing the existing RTX 2070 Super that he already had in his current build since it is still a solid card for the games that he plays. Please be aware that there are plenty of heavier cards with SAG out there, and I did have a small problem with this one which I will show later on. Just like I have done on every previous build, Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Paste is basically the only thing I use on CPUs. Corsair changed up the mounting for the AM4 socket to use four screw standoffs that still utilize the existing pre-mounted plastic bracket on the motherboard, and while this is a better solution with mounting, unfortunately, I have issues with it that I will have to discuss in a future video. I know that the Corsair H115i comes with two ML120 fans, but Brogan did not want RGB in this build and wanted the best possible thermals he could get. So, he also bought two 140mm Noctua fans to mount on the radiator. Though we did not use the fans from the Corsair H115i, we will definitely use the Commander Core that comes with it since it is actually useful with IQ. Once the Commander Core was in, I went through the painful process of wiring. Just an FYI, I did end up having to use some PWM extension cables for some of the case fans in order to route the wires cleanly. 
The thing I wanted to mention about the GPU earlier with the sag was that I did have to use a rubber grommet to put in between the card and one of the bottom fans because the sag was rubbing against the fan originally. But finally, we are done. enjoy building in this case. ITX is a fun challenge that I hope I get to keep doing. I do want to let everyone know that I found out that Brogan did upgrade his monitors and because of that, upgraded his GPU to a Founders Edition 3070 Ti. If you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you in the next one.